Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, the folks over at Skylum Software have released update two of what they call Luminar Neo Early Access. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what's new in this, the early access version of Luminar Neo. If you pre-ordered Luminar Neo, you have the ability to download what they're calling this early access version of the application. It's not meant to be the fully working version of the app. It has some things working, some things don't work, some things work kind of slow, others work pretty well. The idea is you get an idea of what the application can do and you could begin to learn how to use it. Now, as far as this, uh, this update two of the early access version, they claim they fixed 12 bugs. I do know they fixed one bug that was affecting me. You may remember in the previous video I I did on Luminar Neo, I was trying to demonstrate Luminar Share. Luminar Share is an app you have on your phone that you couple with Luminar Neo on your computer to allow you to upload images taken from your phone that are on your phone directly into Luminar Neo. And the way you couple these apps together is you use a QR code. So when you open up the Share app on your phone, it's gonna prompt you to scan a QR code. And the QR code is found within Luminar Neo in the export menu. So if you go to the export menu and click on connect, you'll get the QR code. For me, Almost every single time I tried to bring up the QR code, my computer or the app on my computer would crash. So I wasn't able to connect my phone to the app. I, I was actually able to do it once and then it just wouldn't do it. It just kept crashing. They fixed it. So that I know they fixed. Now they did add some new features as well. Um, some of these are rather relatively mundane. They're in every app and they were in Luminar AI, but you know, they, they're adding things as we go to Luminar Neo. And one of those things, let's go over to the edit um, panel. You know, a little eyedropper tool you could use to get white balance. Um, they added that to the app and that is found in the develop tools. So if you go to develop and you go down to color, you can see there's the, uh, the uh, eyedropper. You click on that and it's prompting you to pick a target neutral. So that means something white or gray. And you just click on it and you'll get a white balance adjustment. So that has been added as well. They also added some functionality to the crop tool. If I go up to the crop tool, they added rotate and flip. So you could rotate the image counterclockwise. You now could flip it horizontally and you could flip it vertically. So that has been added as well. Now, another thing they've done is the remove power lines feature. That was in previous versions of this early release copy but um, apparently it didn't work as well as people thought it should work. It was leaving some artifacts behind. They claimed they fixed that and it's working much better. Now to get to the remove power lines feature, you need to go to the erase tool. So go in the erase tool and you can see it's right here, remove power lines. Now one thing I did notice, it seems to be working much slower than it did in the previous version. The previous version, it may be, took five to 10 seconds to remove these two small power lines in this image. Now it's taken, I would say over 20 seconds. Well, let's click on it right now. So it's, it's removing the power lines. It's gonna take a second. Now, I don't have any images with any more complex set of power lines in them. Apparently, um, subconsciously, when I go out shooting, I actively, try to avoid getting power lines in my shots. So I don't have many images with power lines in them. And I just found this one. So this is really all I have. It's uh, admittedly not a very complex set of power lines, but you could see it did do a good job. And you could see that it did take a little while to do it, maybe over 20 seconds. I wasn't counting obviously, but um, you can see it, it does work. So that is good. At least they're improving things, trying to make them work better. Um, unfortunately, a little bit slow. 
Let's go to this image, uh, not an image I'm proud of, I'm just doing it for this demo. Um, this is an image where I replaced the sky, I added the stars, okay, into the sky, and it's under edits over here, I already did it already, so it's right here. And one thing they added is in sky orientation, you're not able to flip the sky you add. Now, of course, you could do that in Luminar AI, but that wasn't available in Luminar Neo until this early release version of the app. So you now could flip the sky um, vert or horizontally, I should say, I'm sorry. And finally, um, they added Portrait Boca AI, uh, which is one of the major features they're touting for Luminar Neo. So I have this image here. Um, typically, when you take someone's photo and there's background, you're going to want to use a wide aperture to blur out the background. But not all of us could afford those f of 1.2 or 1.4 lenses, and we can't always get that really creamy bokeh. Well, they have an app or they have a tool in here called Portrait Bokeh, which technically isn't bokeh, all right? It's just blurring the background. But it is a nice feature. At least you could blur the background. You're not really technically getting um, pleasing bokeh that you can with the lens that is shot wide open. So in this case, uh, what it will do when you open up the portrait bokeh, it's under the portrait tools, is it will find uh, the subject of the image, which in this case is the young lady. And if I move them out to the right, it will blur out the background. Now, there's you have a lot of control over here. You may have noticed, let me undo this uh, for a second. Watch her shirt right here, okay? Um, I'm going to max it out. You can see how it's actually blurring part of her shirt right here. Well, you could then brush with brush control. You could brush in parts of the areas you want to be in focus. Or if there's a part of the image that you want out of focus, you could defocus it. Or if you just want to restore where you brushed back to you know the default setting, just go on restore. That's kind of like an eraser brush. So in this case, I want to focus this area here. So I'm going to click on focus and I'm going to get a smaller radius brush. And I don't think I need too much softness on this brush. And I'm going to brush in here like that. And you'll see in a second or three, there it is. So it's now in focus uh, there. But you could see that how it blurred out the background. So there's before. Before after is not working right. See how that I'm clicking on the eyeball. There's before and there's after. There we go. Before, after. Now you do have control over the background itself too. As far as do you want the background to be dark or light? So you could do that. Let's say we darken it a little bit and make the model pop out of the um, frame a little more. Now highlights. This is one thing I like. I kind of noticed I kind of like to bring the brightness down, but I like to boost up the highlights. And you'll see the brighter parts get a little brighter then. Maybe add a little tonal contrast to the background. Then with the warmth, I can make the background warmer or cooler. Kind of like it, I think, a little cooler. Now, depth correction. This is a real powerful slider. Uh, if you find that, let's say, it's blurring too much of the foreground, you want the background, you want the blur to start more in the background, take depth correction to the right. And you'll see that it will start to push the um, blur back more. Now, if you want the blur more forward, move it to the left. And you can see now it's blurring out pretty much everything except the model. So you could mess with depth correction, correction to get the um, blur um, right where you need it to be for your image. Then if you find that you're getting any haloing or any kind of blurred edges that you don't want, you go to edge correction and you could help correct for that. This is a very subtle adjustment and on this image I'm not seeing much there. So that is Portra Boca that has been um, one of the major features of Luminar Neo that has finally been added to the early access versions uh, for us to check out. Now, as far as, you know, this you know, update, like I said, that's all that's new. Uh, they did, you know, fix those 12 bugs and hopefully they did some other things to help speed things up that were running slow. I haven't used every single tool in these early release versions of Luminar Neo. So I don't know specifically which of these tools might be underperforming, working very slowly, might be buggy. If that was the case with the previous version, hopefully that 
issue, whatever you may have encountered with a specific tool, has been fixed or at least improved in this version as we anxiously await for the official release of Luminar Neo. I have all kinds of information in the description below this video if you're interested in purchasing Luminar Neo. Also, my discount code should be working now. Um, it typically won't work when the product is on sale, and I don't think there's really an official sale for Luminar Neo anymore. But let me know in the comments if my um, discount code is or is not working, or let other people know so they know and they could try it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <music>